Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Joy News Today. We're coming to you live from our studios in Kokum Limne. We're on GTT because we're free to air. On DSTV channel 421 and Go TV channel 125, we are your home of independent, fearless, and credible journalism. Coming up this afternoon, the minority in parliament to send on the health minister to parliament to answer urgent questions on deteriorating health facilities in the country. We'll share the special case of the lack of adequate space, which is compromising the health of quality care, uh, the confirmation. Nochi Teaching Hospital. Also this afternoon, Ghana Water Company Limited in the central region reveals its reduced production by 30% due to massive pollution caused by illegal mining activities. We have details of the muddied uh, water and clogged sumps shortly. Plus, NDC flag bearer charges party leadership to enhance monitoring of the general elections. We have details for you. And also, of his uh, touring uh, the greater Accra region, plus would we'll also bring you the founder of the Movement for Change, Alan Shermantin, who is also touring the Volta region. We're also live on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and X Spaces for our Join News on TV. Please do stay with us. <laughs> Many thanks for choosing us. The maternal care at the Menshia Government Hospital in the Ashanti region has over the years been a headache for medical staff owing to the heavy congestion at the facility. The hospital, which is among the few health facilities supporting the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital, is presently receiving overwhelming numbers impacting maternal health care delivery. Management at the hospital says the situation is forcing expectant mothers to deliver within unhygienic conditions conditions, including sleeping on the bare floor. There's more in this report. The Mensha South Hospital says its establishment in the 1960s has been a satellite health facility supporting the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital in the Ashanti region. The maternal unit of the hospital sees at least 80 baby deliveries weekly, which is almost 4,000 deliveries yearly. The facility it has presently a 23-bed capacity, which is unable to accommodate the number of pregnant mothers that trip to the facility. Congestion at the hospital is heavily impacting maternal care as many expectant mothers are forced to be catered for in uncomfortable situations. Dr. Kamaruddin Koku Hussein is The maternity unit that we have has uh, 23 beds. That is the capacity that we have, which is woefully inadequate, looking at the number of deliveries that we do. The, the day that the king himself came here, there are a lot of people lying on the floor. So, you know, nobody is happy to see a mother delivered and then you put the mother on the floor. So we see it as a very dire situation for us. SDG that we talk about, quality of care is part of it. Number one, the person who is delivering the care himself or herself must be held. So if you have mothers on the ground, it means that the health worker will have to bend down and be attending to the client on the floor. Within a couple of months, you will start having low back pain. So you, the health care worker, yourself, you are not healthy to attend to, to a client. But apart from that, a lot of accidents could happen when you have somebody on the ground. The night somebody is walking, could step on the baby, could step on the mother. So obviously uh, it's going to affect the quality of care that you give to such a person. To ease congestion at the maternal block of the hospital, the Otum for Charity Foundation, in collaboration with Joe Beck Foundation, has handed over an extension of the maternity block to the hospital. The one-story facility, currently with two large wards, is expected to receive medical installation under the second phase. Joseph Magnus Mate is the chief executive officer of Joe Beck Foundation. The well-being of the people of Ghana. That's the very um, key thing that is really on our hearts at Joe Beck Foundation, uh, especially where they sleep and then how well they are taken care of. And we realize that it's, it is important that um, we go up north the belt to also donate something there to help the people up uh, in the middle bed and also going up 
to the north. Board Chair of Utum Foundation, Professor Heneba Bwachi Eje Owa Hene II, is optimistic of a better maternal care with the establishment of the extended block. It's more imperative to extend the maternity block to expectant mothers. For Joy News, my name is Emmanuel Bright Quaku. <laughs> The minority in Parliament says it will summon the health minister to Parliament to answer urgent questions regarding deteriorating health facilities in the country. It follows the lack of adequate space which is compromising the quality of health care at the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital. Data from the National Ambulance Service suggests the hospital receives more emergency cases than any other hospital in the country. Meanwhile, Joy News checks suggest wards are the accident and emergency centre designed to accommodate 12 patients on the average now houses over 40 patients with some receiving treatment on the floor the head of public relations at the facility Kwame Frimpon says until resources are improved quality health care cannot be guaranteed he spoke earlier on news desk so Kofaraki Team Hospital is actually in that need of expansion in that need of modernization uh, because the pressure is said that if our equipment we keep breaking down around the clock if you should come to the Western Emergency Center now, or virtually all the special beds that are being used for patient care is replacement. All the beds must be replaced, and the same goes for that facility like the ventilators, for the patient monitors, and so because there's so much pressure on us. You know, we are the most accessible hospital in Ghana, given our location uh, in this part of the country. And so we receive a lot of cases. In fact, from our records, up to 12 regions. All the regions that are surrounded, it's easier for them to get to us than to go to, for instance, Accra. And so there's a lot of pressure on this hospital. But regrettably, uh, we've not had the benefit of uh, any expansion or comprehensive renovation over the years. And that is one of the major causes of the congestion that we are witnessing at the hospital. On our own, I've told you that we are optimizing the use of the existing space that we have. And that's how come, if you come to the Orange, for instance, a 12-bed capacity, we now have 40, 42 beds. Because we've compressed the use of the space in order to allow for more beds to be uh, placed in these areas. We believe that it is about time the region start up and, and make sure that the upcoming facilities like the Kumeru and the uh, regional hospital, the ferries and the rest, we, we, we try as much as possible to impress upon the state to complete those facilities so that we take some of the pressure of us. Since I joined this hospital in 2005, we've had a number of CEOs, but each of them have, has always resisted the temptation to close down this hospital when it is full, because they think that you are giving the people who are coming here no option because there's no alternative. So on our own, we've tried to soak up the pressure, but it is, it's, it's reached a point where we are putting too much stress on our staff, too much stress on existing facilities, and, and they keep breaking down, and it is becoming a problem. Well, so we are hoping that as we do the best that we can by optimizing the existing facilities to divide the best of service, there is the urgent need for this country to take a critical look at health infrastructure in the central region. And, and make sure that uh, once you get the needed help that it is. Well, the ranking member on Parliament's Health Committee, Minta Kando, says his committee will ensure the health minister appears before Parliament to answer questions in relation to health facilities across the country that needs urgent attention. He spoke on News Desk. We have to be able to equip our health facilities with the necessary and medical equipment. Now the answer is, due to the strategic position of Confanoci Civil Hospital, it is expected that pressure will come to bear on them. So if you could recall, His Excellency Jamzamani Mohammed administration made the attempt 
to reduce the pressure and comfort and also by contracting a number of health facilities in that environment. So you talk about the we are, you talk about the family, you talk about Kumaru, you talk about Kumina. So if you complete this major hospital in the entry, it will automatically reduce the pressure on Kumaru. That is the idea. Why you are looking at expanding Kumaru, renovating Kumaru, you are looking at completing this health facility within the entry to break down the pressure on Kumaru. Yes. So quite recently, about two, three, four days ago, I had my chance to take the the sauna and ask your 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 your, your rest in Parliament. I showed some of the sick hospitals on the floor of the house. That is the way we can get them to do the right thing. But these are, I mean, people who don't really care. They don't care. If you have any responsible government in place, even after airing this news, somebody must be, I mean, somebody must be answering some questions. The president or the vice president or the minister must quickly find out what is happening and must then solve the issue. I look, you people, join, join me. You need a document you want to take hospitals. Go back to those hospitals if anything at all has been done. So that's the example we find ourselves in. So we will, we will continue to do our best to some of these interviews, to questions and inviting the minister responsible for health to appear before the house. Unfortunately, um, there has been some reshuffle and the new one has not been cleared to appear before us. But as and when um, he's cleared, we, we, we will tell you about that. In the Volta region, there's a deliberate effort to significantly boost maternal and neonatal health care as the MTN Ghana Foundation, in collaboration with the Ghana Health Service, inaugurates a maternity and neonatal intensive care unit complex at the Keta Municipal Hospital. The state-of-the-art complex is equipped with modern facilities, advanced medical equipment and expert staff to provide comprehensive care to expectant mothers and newborns. Ivy Setoji has more. The newly constructed facility is a testament to the commitment of both MT and Ghana Foundation Ghana Health Service to enhance maternal and child health outcomes in Ghana. The state-of-the-art complex is equipped with modern facilities advancement and experts staff to provide comprehensive care to expectant mothers and newborns. Speaking at the ceremony, the CEO of MTN Ghana, Salom Atavo, emphasized the company's dedication to supporting initiatives that have lasting impact on communities project were a couple of things. One, the fact that we hadn't done any project in the Volta region for several years. And secondly, the foundation supports three verticals or three pillars, health, education, and economic empowerment. And this aligns very closely and fully with the health pillar. We felt as a team, the MTN Ghana Foundation, that this was a worthy project to support. In fact, the original request was to support with some consumables and some support, things like beds, additional beds, and other equipment. And we felt that we should take on something that's a little bit more ambitious so that we can transform the experience of mothers and children when it comes to child, child care and maternal care in the, in the Keta Hospital. He also announced plans to expand the accident and emergency wards at the whole teaching hospital. Yeah, so at the moment, we've just approved the project to build an enhanced emergency room department for the whole hospital, the regional hospital. So that's the next big project in the Volta region that we're embarking on. The Awar Mafia of Angro, Toby Street, has also be speaking on the project. This afternoon is meant 
to commission maternity and child health work built for us by MTN. It will be worthwhile sending our heartiest congratulations to MTN Ghana Limited for the wonderful kindness shown to our state. We collectively thank them sincerely for their determination, passion, and focus to develop and maintain good health among Ghanaians, especially the Anglo people. It is a fact, not open to dispute, that the MTN has shown a special love for Anglo people. In fact, I am at last what to say on this memorable occasion. The MTN will forever remain printed on the minds of our people. Thank you. Emmanuel Kona is the Keta Municipal Health Director. This occasion marks a significant milestone in our journey towards enhancing quality health care delivery for pregnant women and neonates in our community. However, with the commission of this new state-of-the-art building, Equipped with modern facilities, we are we are poised to elevate quality of care and expand access to health services for expectant mothers and newborns. I extend my sincere appreciation to MTN Ghana and the MTN Ghana Foundation for their steadfast commitments and responsibility. Their generous funding of this project and has caused their dedication to improving the lives of communities across our nation. Some excited pregnant women have also been speaking with your news. <laughs> Nagro, <laughs> Back to the Ashanti region, where close to 200 stalls and properties worth millions of cities have been ravaged in a fire outbreak at the Kumasi Racecourse Market. The cause of the fire, which started early Monday morning, is yet to be known. The Ghana Fire Service has not been able to completely douse the fire. Five people have been arrested, however, for assaulting fire tenders when they allegedly reported to the scene. My colleague Emmanuel Bright Quick who joins me live from that scene uh, with more. Emmanuel, what's the situation as we speak? Emmanuel Bright Kweku. So all right, so Aisha, um, as you can see rightly behind me, um, that's the fire situation here at the race course market, um, located specifically in the Bantama constituency. Um, according to the traders over here, this fire started about <coughs> 1 a.m. I must say that the fire has not completely doused, and so you can see some smoke in there. That's why I had to cough. And so the situation here on the ground is that shops close to um, 200 have been gutted by this fire situation and according to the traders over here it started about 1 a.m and unfortunately some five individuals have been picked up by the ghana police service according to them um, these individuals attacked the fire tenders um, and their reasons is that because they did not attend to the situation on time, they had to attack some of these fire tenders, and the authorities are saying that it is just to deter people. So they have been arraigned before courts, and other proceedings would follow suit. But I would want to paint a picture for you um, what the situation really is on the ground. So as you can see behind me, that is the smoke emanating from the goods that have been ravaged. Um, I'm having some onions and then also um, cabbage that have been destroyed um, by the fire that started earlier um, today. But I have some traders over here um, to speak with and then ascertain what really is the cause of the fire and then what maybe they have lost. Um, we understand that some uh, millions worth of Ghana cities have been um, destroyed. 
Mami, um, a jano, a denisi, a dena now ton waha, a ashi. A pacho, a jani de, me ton jenny. Nan regiana, my cofania, my beguho. In fact, twenty five bars, nam de beguho, and I'm coffee. Timantis, a jacula atoha. Bahumachina, me sorry, I'm very a mebano. And I'm a tissue, I see jatoha. Be bedu, I never say a jani de. I say, and your manacon con say, a more bro, be bia. Sister Mia, me niya ma me fi send ram kofa ye e ye twenty five pass. Ene ram ni ma be go ni ni na she. Ane bo e se. Me pa chow jene one bag biya e ye eight point five eight million five hundred. Ana me fa twenty five pass. Ma ni ba kokura ba ni ni na she. Ti me stress em peni for mo ya ya mo. Ti sa me ni me me ni obi ya me ya fo biya. Ti mo ya ya mo. All right, so, so that's a trader over here. She sells onion and she tells me that um, she went um, to transport some goods into the market yesterday, some 25 bags of onion, and they have been destroyed um, by the fire. But uh, we have more of these uh, men um, actually who are here. They tell us that um, they are alleging illegalities connection of illegal illegal connections that is what is actually causing this particular um, fire but the Ghana National Fire Service have not really ascertained they are that um, they are going to start with preliminary investigations to ascertain the cause of the fire. I must also add that um, the Bantima constituency member of parliament Asenso Boache has also been to the market and he assured the market women and men here that they are going to work around the clock to resolve this particular issue and then bring everything to under control. But I have a trader with me. I can see one hour and Sana is easy for us to be there at me doing. According to them, they say it's easy for it to be doing light in Tama, Camille Sosa Janere, a best sossy. Now, my ya and doom light in Tamino. Five cells for us to buy a multimere and for Jane and Fancy lighting. And on a ma honey in a sinny in an. Now, public may be a casas in Liga, now seen the public, or be a no, or by an agency maybe in the Japadia, and also be Japadia, share or manage. Os mostly ni e kasa e ti e se mebe e adu e na si e na enye ni pa ba ko pe de e na ashi e ye ya ye wo hin nyina de e na ashi obi a hwere na de na asa mo ka e gu ni pa bi se bi e liga connect na ne ma ne ma we de be ntisa e ye wo ha na light ni dundum na so mu dundum off off e off e off sa to wo ko fie na wo dum bi na de bi na off e off wo dum de re je be da ja na ba ba Anu na maja ni so e no na enye se bia bo po e bia bia ni pa bi na e si ja na na si bibi enye illegal connection aya ade a aye aja aye dum light e bia a touch na e di sa de na ba cause illegal connection there senka issue for juma se we ya illegal connection aye senka mu juma na senka mu follow out together say illegal connection wa ha ya timi break together na ne mu juma ne ne de so amu mu yana am fine sa ne man am fine se bia illegal connection e de jan ba so amu fi ara kwa mba fa so mba boy amu boy say ya no ma ya jepadi a shi aha so that's also a trader he actually mails at, at this particular market. Um, he is actually um, not attributing this particular fire situation to um, illegal connection, as it has been alleged by some people. But as you can see um, in your shots, these are some traders who are trying to salvage the little of items that have been left um, behind, the residue um, from this particular fire situation. So they are trying to salvage some onions. And I'll quickly interact with them and see. Mame. Pacho yen ni undi ukoma kaka me pacho ujene ne eh ne boye sen ai timi ashi sa no eh 6.5 be 7.5 pacho yen she camera ni mame eh 7.5 ha na ye fa eni ne cast kan yin na be so 8.5 nti je ne ye fa e no e bit mi fa 20 bus obit mi fa 30 bus ti je ne ye wa ha no ye na na mko fa e e be yi ye agu ha ha na ye ko fie ti ye ko fie no e bo 130 ha na mo frae Tejato ha. 
Okay, so, so that's also a trader here. Um, she was trying to um, salvage her onions a little bit. Now, flag bearer of the National Democratic Congress, John Mahama, has charged party leadership to enhance monitoring in the general elections. According to him, efforts in campaigning may fail to yield the needed results if monitoring is not enhanced. The former president is seeking to return to power wants party members to cooperate with structures being used in selection of election monitoring team. He hinted on the need to increase votes in the greater Accra region by at least 300,000 votes to enhance the chances of state and come back. Nanaya Ojima is with the president. He'll be joining us uh, shortly with more. But first, listen to the president cautioning the party members. We will, we will accompany you to a 10,000 kilowatts mobile sound system which is powered by a 35 kilowatt generator which will follow you anywhere you come in Greater Accra. We are building four of it and we are doing one here today. The Greater Accra region next week is going to train constituency executives train them how to use drones to monitor what happens in our National Chairman said the media is here. Nanaya Ojima is with the former president. He joins us with more. Nanaya, where is the flag bearer now? And what message has he been sharing with the electorate? So before we talk about the flag bearer himself, the sound bite he just made is the Greater Accra Regional Chairman of the NDC, Mr. Asimo, he was talking about how the NDC intends to monitor the next election. He says that the NDC is willing or they are already making provisions to use drones in their monitoring. So this, they believe, will help them uh, protect their, the, the, the votes that the NDC is able to garner in this election. But the flag bearer of the NDC, after a meeting with party executives of the NDC at Dodoa, uh, moved off uh, drove through the Dodoa market where he was mobbed by these market women and traders who were present at the time. Yeah. From after that um, drive through, he drove straight to the Greater Accra Regional House of Chiefs where he's expected to meet the regional traditional authority and put before them his plans for the country. At the meeting with the party executives, Mr. Mahama charged the party that is to enhance its monitoring, its monitoring structures and also for them to intensify campaigning. And the campaigning must go with the monitoring of the election because we believe that uh, without the monitoring system in place, the NDC will not be able to reap the full benefits of the campaigning that they will be doing come 2024. So he wants the NDC to, govern, uh, to, to close all of its ranks and work together to ensure that the party is able to win the 2024 elections. So we're expecting the flag bearer of the NDC to also address the uh, Greater Accra Regional House of Chiefs. And after that, he moves straight to Abu Sokai, where he is supposed to meet some traders and spare in the industrial hub. All right. So uh, how has the reception been uh, for the flag bearer where he is right now? So at the Greater Accra Regional House of Chiefs, the various traditional authorities who are here are excited 
um, uh, I excited about the opportunity to interact with the former president. Before here, he was at the Dodoa market, and the pictures were so, so exciting to see. The people there were happy about his presence in the market, and some of them that could speak to us on the sidelines, they, they, they expressed their satisfaction towards the drive through and the acceptance that during the campaign itself, the former president and flag of the NDC will make a stop at Dodua market and share with them his plans and vision for the country. Right, Nana Ojima there following the NDC flag bearer. We'll bring you more on this, but from the Greater Aqua, let's go to the Volta region because the founder and leader of the Butterfly uh, Movement, Alan Kwejo Chairman Ting, has promised to transform Japan in the North Tong district of the Volta region into the an economic hub. He says he aims at revamping the Volta Star Textile Factory, uplift the market, and establish a traders' bank in the enclave to achieve his vision. He is therefore entreated in electorating the Volta region to resist from following the NDC and vote for him in the December 7 general elections to enable him improve the economic status of the region. Mr. Chairman Ting was speaking at Joapon during his market tour of the Volta region. Well, my colleague Fred Kwame Asari has been following him for us. He joins us. Fred, where is Alan Chairman Ting now and what more has he been telling the market folks? Well, uh, Alan Chermantin is currently in the, whole, in the whole central market, where he's storing the market, and then traders here have been uh, welcoming him, cheering him up, and then singing, Jose Alan, Jose Alan. He, he's actually supposed to talk about five markets today. He started from Japan, where he mentioned that he's uh, ready to transform Japan into uh, a economic hub. He mentioned that Japan being on the stretch from Accra to Holy have uh, an economic status where uh, every day or every time you get to drop on there should be economic activities ongoing. So he mentioned that he has plans to, uh, or he has projects to implement to ensure that drop on is transformed into an economic hub. He mentioned the state of the market where he said that he would bring food to uplift the status of the market to make it bigger so that uh, traders would uh, be able to trade and then uh, get more income. He also mentioned that uh, he wants to establish a traded market in Japan, uh, saying that uh, at the moment the country lacks a dedicated financial institution for traders. So he is hoping to uh, do this in line with his economic vision or improving the economic uh, status of Ghana. From who he would be going to uh, Masi Kumasi, where he will be touring the market and then interacting with traders there, and then move to. Ajidume, then from Ajidume he ends at Tuga So today his market tour of the water in the will end in Tuga Fred Kwame Asari, with that uh, from uh, Volta region with Alan Tremontain, will definitely bring you more on this in our subsequent bulletins. Let's take a break on Joy News today. When we return, we'll bring you business. <music> A great afternoon to you and a warm welcome to the business segment on Joy News today with me, Pius Kojo Baka. Republic Bank Ghana PLC says it remains committed to expanding its mortgage banking services to reach more customers in the Ashanti region as well as the northern parts of the country. The bank has established a mortgage hub in the Ashanti region with hopes of becoming a one-stop desk for affordable and accessible ownership. More in this report. Report suggests that Ghana's housing deficit stands at 1.8 million units as of 2021. Although a 33% reduction from figures in 2010, the deficit is regarded as disturbing as many Ghanaians are without homes owing to financial constraints. Republic Bank Ghana PLC is a loan acquisition in the fast growing mortgage business to the middle and northern sectors of the country. In 2023, the bank introduced the ultra-low mortgage interest rate campaign as an intervention to the hikes in interest rates, forest rate volatility and other factors affecting home purchase. Dan Ajete Mohinu is the head of mortgage banking and customer experience at Republic Bank. We, we have about seven um, mortgage products that we are showcasing um, at the hub. 
um, for someone who wants to purchase a completed house, for someone who wants equity release in an existing property, for um, one who wants to complete their um, building, they've started their project, their lock up at a point and they need money to complete. We are going to showcase our home completion mortgage to them. For people who also have houses and they want to go um, do some sort of expansion or renovation, there's also a product for them. Um, we also have the pension bank mortgage. Since its inception in 1990, the bank has been at the forefront of the mortgage business. As a home finance company, the financial institution is hoping to support government to bridge the housing deficit in the country. Later, Pinto is a communications manager of the bank. We've been in mortgage financing for over 35 years, and one of our focuses has been to do that work that gives government some assurance that the people of Ghana can also own their own properties. We all know how wide the deficit is with home um, ownership in Ghana. So Republic Bank, our business has always been to help government bridge that gap. And one of the products we have in collaboration with government is the NHF. That's a government project that gives you the opportunity to own your first home with probably your pensions or even your own earnings. Patrons of mortgage packages of the bank shared benefits gained. When I moved to my current place, I told myself, you know, looking at the rent I'm paying and the mortgage repayment, I would rather go for a pensions back mortgage because I'm already in the pensions industry. A mortgage comes with a hazard. This hazard needs to be what? financed through what insurance. So we come in to support both sides. That is the bank and then the owner of the property. Their product in terms of getting us customers to buy uh, the houses that we build. So it's not like we are out there doing marketing for ourselves, but the bank is the one doing all this marketing and it makes our business very, very smooth. We've done about three uh, projects with them and it's, it's gone smoothly. Other places we've gone, the process are quite cumbersome, but with them it's smart and Customers are not complaining. That's what we all want. For Joy News, my name is Emmanuel Bright Kweku. Interest rates fell for the third consecutive week as demand for treasury bills continued to remain high despite the upside risks. More in this report. As predicted by many analysts, interest rates plummeted to reflect the lower inflation. The yield on the 91-day bill fell by 25 basis points to 26.74%. That of the 182-day also eased to 29.24% from 29.49% the previous week. Similarly, the 364-day bill went down by 16 basis points to 29.84%. Meanwhile, the government accepted all the bids tended to a tune of 4.83 billion cities. This is about 12% over subscription. For the 91-day bill, about 2.72 billion cities were tendered representing 56.3% of the total bids. The uptick was also 2.72 billion cities. For all the 182-day bill, all the 919.40 million cities of the bids were accepted. The same applies to the 364-day bill, in which 118 billion cities were accepted. We offer business for now, but rather I need to bring this to your attention. At 1 p.m. there will be no be marketplace, but rather we shall be bringing you the Ghana, um, Canada Chamber of Commerce um, partnership with Joy Business International Women's Day Forum. Now we have been discussing or will be discussing the topic creating an enabling environment for women in organizations and institutions to inspire growth. Our panelists are Selassie Nupe Adam, Assistant Director of Career Services at Associated University. Chika Akolache, Country Director of NLB's Ghana, and Linda Vasnani, Chief Operating Officer of Consolidated Shipping Agencies. And Kayla Giraldo will be moderating with alongside my colleague um, Emma Davis here on Joy News. Do make a date with us at 1 p.m. for our Thought Leadership program. Sports is next. Let's bring you sports now on Joy News today with me, Mufta Nabila Abla. Two Ghanaian swimmers, Abeku Jackson and Nubia Ajay, have made it to the final of the uh, breaststroke um, swimming event which took place uh, this morning. 
at the Bottoman Sports Complex. The swimmers, Abeku especially, won uh, silver medal for Ghana during the butterfly event, which happened at the Bottoman Swimming uh, Facility, uh, which was on Tuesday. Now, let's take a look at how Abeku Jackson won the silver uh, yesterday uh, during the swimming event and uh, also spoke about the excitement of uh, winning a medal for the country. And prior to Abeku Jackson winning uh, the silver medal for Ghana, um, Winifred Intumi had won three medals for the country, gold, silver and bronze in the 49 kg uh, category during the weightlifting event that took place at the University of Ghana. This is how we are wrapping up sports here on the journey today with me, Muftao Nabila Ablaba. Just before that, take a look at how uh, she won the gold medal for Ghana. That's your sports for now. We do have more sports stories on myjoyonline.com. We appreciate your time. Good afternoon. Welcome to the show. This segment with me, Jacqueline and Samaya. Well, now, the fifth edition of Ghana's renowned Indignos Christian Worship Program, Bankers of Worship, has attracted hundreds of patrons into an atmosphere of musical performances from six gospel worship leaders and songwriters, as well as some choirs in the Tema region. Speaking at this year's event, the brain behind Bankers of Worship, Pastor Koji Otten, implored Ghanaians to ensure peace during and after the December 7th elections. There's more in this report. This year's Bankers of Worship bow was under the theme, The Father's Blessing. This is the first after the devastating impact of COVID-19 pandemic, which forced the last two editions into virtual platforms. In all, six gospel artists headlined the event. Among them were Reverend PJ Marque, Joyous Kwame, Echo Basam, including the hosting Bell 2024 also featured choirs like the Zoe Temple Choir, Sword of Gideon, the Kindness Choir, the Beautiful Melodians, and the Wombs of Worship. Some of the artists spoke to Joy News. It's been an amazing night. It's been a glorious night. It's been an intense time of worship and praise. And if you were not here, all is not lost. Next year, make sure you don't miss out. We have had so much fun with God. We have felt his presence. We have been refreshed. The Bible says that we should enter his gates with thanksgiving. Pastor Kojo Oten is the brain behind the Banquet of Worship. He used the platform to appeal to Ghana, especially political parties, to ensure a peaceful election on December 7th. Man, wife, children can belong to different sectors, but still, at the end of the day, we are Ghanaians, and that is the most important thing. So we thank God for Ghana. We pray that in this coming election, God will calm every storm and we'll see victory and we'll see peace. Ghana, at the end of the day, will win. Banquet of Worship was birthed in 2018 
with earlier events held in Kumase, Sunyane and Accra attracting over 4,000 patrons. Beyond singing, Banquet of Worship has also embarked on a senior high school campus ministry as well as caring for orphanages. This year's program was also used to record three new songs by the pioneer. The worship leader and songwriter Kuju Otten is optimistic the new songs will be out soon for the spiritual upliftment of patrons. Now, season one of the Dream Achievers project with actress Kafi Danku marked a milestone with an inspiring event held over the weekend in Accra. Now, the event, which attracted 300 applicants from all over Ghana, showcased the ingenuity and determination of entrepreneurs who stood among 2,000 entries that were received. Speaking to Joy Prime's Lois Shola Adeyemi, the actress revealed why she put this initiative together. Before anything, I've always, I believe, I always say that I'm a, I'm a super special. I've benefited from a lot of people, a lot of who have given me gifts and support that has, I mean, uh, benefited my life. So I am a firm believer in giving, something we do in my family. So go, I mean, I do it every now and then. And But then what inspired is actually, during COVID, a lot of people, people were asking for more support than usual. So I had to now come, even maybe one is a while, I'll send money to somebody I don't know or haven't even seen before. Maybe I just call them on video to confirm they are real and I send maybe a thousand, two thousand, this, that. Every, and I'm like, okay, fine. I can, sometimes I may even be sending to like the wrong people. So why don't I maybe squeeze myself, maybe save some more money and then make it a bigger, a bigger project so that a lot of people, a lot of real people can benefit and then maybe we can also grow from there. Like, so it's what pushed it is just the, 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 the zeal to see people also succeed. Somebody will come, please, I need 1000 for my school fees, my, child, my son's school fees. I'll give it a ne next minute. Oh, is that with her bag? I give it to her. The next minute, is that I need a mattress. I'm not, that you need something to do. If, you are inv if I invest in you or support your business or may help you start something, you don't have to be coming back to me every time because there's no guarantee that I will get it for you every single time you come. That when I'm not there, if I can help you, why not? If I'm not there, you can also still help and fend for yourself. So that's the whole idea why the focus is on businesses. It is just the first time. I mean, I'm sure God is going to open bigger doors and we will help a lot more people. I have so much I'm doing, you have no idea. Dreams Project is one of them. I have a podcast loading. I have the projects that I can't wait to share with you. So there's so much happening at the same time. A lot. Yes, I can't wait to share them. Now, season three of the Best Kids Cooking Show, Big Chef, is back. Last Sunday's episode saw the seasoned judges, Chef Kofi and Chef Rafia too, summon all 12 contestants into the kitchen to announce the tax of the day. The 12 contestants grouped into Team Joy and Team Prime entered the kitchen for the first time to whip up breakfast meals to um, hopefully warm their way into the judges' hats. Joy Prime's Lois Adeyemi has more in this report. The atmosphere was filled with excitement as the selected 12 contestants entered the hot kitchen for the first time. You're welcome to Big Chef Season 3. If you're happy, make some noise! Yeah. The season's judges, Chef Kofi and Chef Rafiatu, tasked the contestants to prepare any breakfast meal of their choice. They were allotted 30 minutes to complete the task. Our task for today is to prepare one of the most important meals of the day, which is breakfast. So you are to surprise us or wow us with your most unique breakfast recipe. And you have five minutes to shop and prepare a menu. And you have 30 minutes to cook. Team Prime was first to chef it up in the kitchen, followed by Team Joy. It was a delightful sight in the kitchen as contestants hurriedly selected their ingredients and got to work. The time allotted them came to an end season, all cooking activities in the kitchen. The judges instructed each contestant to present their meals for tasting. The judges congratulated the contestants for exhibiting their innovative and creative abilities in this challenge. They were also encouraged to step up their game in the kitchen 
as the competition will get tougher. Lois Shola Adeyemi's report for Joy Prime. All right. Hey. So, hey. 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 Well, I'm excited to see what the kids have got for us next week. And it's a wrap for the showbiz segments with me, Jacqueline, and Sama Yobwa. And thank you, Lady in Red, for bringing us showbiz. You're welcome. <laughs> next time, ask me what I'm going to wear before. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> That's our wrap of the bulletin this afternoon. My name is Aisha Prime. Log on to myjournline.com. There's more of the news and updates of all the developing stories. Do enjoy the rest of our program. <laughs>